So the new Matrix movie just came out and I wanted to see if I could create my own version of the Matrix rain code effect in Nuke and I wanted to use this tutorial as an introduction to the Nuke's particle system and all the nodes associated with it. So I wanted to see if there was a creative way we could use this effect and comp it over some footage that we shot just to show that it does have some practical use rather than it just being a motion graphic itself. If you want to see more cool tutorials like this, consider subscribing to us. The way we started off creating the effect is using a particle emitter node. And if you have a look at the actual node itself, uh, it comes with a particle input and an emit input. So the particle input will define what the actual particle should look like. And the emit uh, input is where it's going to come from. So what we're actually using to emit the particles. So what I wanted to do is create a card and from each individual vertice of the card, it's going to uh, emit these little trickles of code. And here's what the card looks like. And you can see that we've defined the rows and columns using this attribute here. And then right underneath that, we're gonna create the particle emitter node. Uh, by default, the particle emitter node looks kind of boring and it just gives you this annoying, boring looking stream of particles and it kind of ends at 50. Um, yeah, so we're going to change the attributes to make it look nice and how we want it to look. What you can do is connect the emit into there. And so now you can see from each individual uh, vertice, it's creating a particle and it's uh, basically streaming downwards. And if you want to use our exact setup and the exact attributes, you can go ahead and copy these. A uh, few things just to keep in mind is the emission rate, we've kept it fairly low because if you keep it too high, then it's just going to blast you with a bunch of um, particles, which and we wanted to give it a more natural and subtle look. And the other thing I wanted to do is just change the max lifetime range to 0.5. So that'll give us a variation of uh, some particles ending earlier, some particles ending more. Uh, later on because then it gives us a more natural feel to it and just the last thing I did is I actually made the start point at negative 55 frames because if we have it at zero uh, the actual trickle of the code will start at zero and then kind of continue on later whereas the way I wanted it to set up is I want it to already be trickling when we begin the the frame so it's completely up to you how you want it to customize it the only thing you should just make sure is keep your emit from to points rather than faces or edges because uh, that's how we're defining how many points it's actually emitting from. So if you want there to be a dense emission of code, you can set the rows and columns to a higher number. So then on the particle spawn node, uh, what to put it simply, what it does is it spawns particles based on the existing particles that are there. So uh, the reason I did that is because when we look at the actual effect, uh, after each frame, I want each character to spawn another character. So you get this nice uh, trickling effect as it goes down. So it's not gonna just show this individual character uh, as each frame goes along, it's gonna, it's gonna freeze this and then spawn another particle based on that. And then the particle that was before it's going to stay in place and then eventually fade off. So that's why we use the particle spawn uh, node. There's not a lot of attributes we changed in the in the actual node. The one important thing to do is set the transfer velocity from one to zero. Hey guys, it's me from the future. A quick little detail I wanted to talk about within the particle spawn node, and that's the transfer velocity. So what that attribute does is that it determines how much of the initial particle's velocity is then transferred onto the particle that it emits. So the reason we keep it on zero is because we want to keep the emitted particle to have a velocity of zero and not retain the velocity of the initial particle. If it were kept to a value of one, which is, I believe, the default, then all the particles that are emitted would be grouped into one and be moving down as a big chunk because it's retaining the original velocity of that particle. So to keep it stationary and give the whole particle system that like nice long streaking motion, we keep it to zero because then when the particle is emitted, it'll stay locked in space while it's there for its lifetime. So you want to go ahead and set that to zero. 
So the next node is the particle color by age node. And that's also why I wanted to explain why we have a duplicate version of each setup. Annoyingly, this node doesn't work too well when you have um, characters coming out of the particle spawn node. So what the, the actual node does is it defines what the color of the particles will be over a certain amount of time. So as you can see here, it'll start off being uh, pure white and then trickle down to being that cool uh, matrix green color. But if we had just connected it here where we have all the actual letters, annoyingly it doesn't do that. And so what I, the way I've set it up is that on the right side, we're gonna define the colors of the particle. And on the left side, we're gonna have the exact same thing, but it's gonna define the shape of the particle and what it's gonna look like. And what the shape is gonna be is the actual, the font and the, the letters that appear in the code itself. So in the actual particle spawn node, it comes with a particle input and that'll define what the particles look like when you, when it spits each particle out. And what I've done is I downloaded the font of the actual font they use in the movie. And what you can do is um, if you go into your fonts plugin folder, you can just put the um, true type font file into there and then uh, that'll let you use whatever font you want into Nuke. But to be honest, you can use whatever text you want in it and it'll, do, it'll have the same effect. And so what I did is I created a copy of this text node and there's 26 of them. So each letter of the alphabet is each particle. So there's 26 inputs, 26 particles, and each of them is going to be another letter of the alphabet, but obviously it's going to be in the language of the font we use for this particular effect. So if we look at this, uh, we just have this white uh, particle effect. And then on the right side, we have the exact same thing, but it's got the right colors that we want. So then uh, to actually translate all this particle information to like a 2D render, we use what's called a scanline renderer. So uh, the node actually comes with a couple of inputs. One's the BG, we're gonna ignore that for now. And the two important ones are the OBJ slash scene. Uh, that'll just, that just connects to what we have in 3D space. So any objects, any particles, it, uh, we connect it to that. So it knows what to actually render. And then which angle it needs to render from, we use a camera. So you can create a camera node and uh, position it exactly where you want it to be using these um, inputs here. So I've made it uh, slightly far back so it's framing in all the particles without leaving too much of a gap here and there. And one little detail you might want to look at is because each uh, vertice of the card is fairly uniform, the, the problem you're going to run into is when you actually look through the scanline renderer um, here, the the particle is going to look slightly too uniform and like as if you've just put them in these very uniform straight lines. So to give it a nice bit of depth, I've rotated the card so that some of the far points are visible far back and some of the closer points are visible close to the camera. So in the actual card, I've changed the rotate value of the Y to negative 18. So now you can see there's some, it's kind of giving it some depth effectively. And so I created the exact same scanline renderer underneath the left side and one on the, the right side. So the one on the right is just giving us this annoying blank uh, green and white color. And the one on the left is gonna show us our um, the actual characters. But the problem is that's pure white and this is, this is the right color. So the way we actually combine it is we use a pre-melt node. So the pre-melt is what it's gonna take uh, the alpha values of our particles and then effectively cut out um, the shape of what the alpha looks like onto the RGB. And then we're gonna use a merge with a mask input uh, connecting from this left side into the right side. So now what it's gonna do is it's gonna use the alpha of this effect and basically stencil that onto, uh, mask that onto this these colors here. 
So now if we look at the mask, it's given us this nice matrix code effect. This falloff won't actually show unless we have this pre-melt because this only defines the value of the alpha, but it doesn't really affect the RGB. So that's why we put the pre-melt so it actually puts those alpha values into effect. Otherwise, it'll, it'll just look like this. And then, yeah, we have the mask here. And if you press play, we have our cool matrix effect. So as I said, it's fairly simple. Uh, you can, anyone can really do this. It doesn't, it's not a very heavy setup. And the actual cool thing about this now is it's completely customizable. So anything you wanna change on this, you can change, you can change the colors, uh, where the colors start from, where they end. And also the other fun thing is now that we have it in 3D space, you can move the camera around. So it gives us that cool uh, 3D perspective effect. So we can basically, what you can do is just move the camera through the particle. So uh, it just has this nice th uh, 3D perspective effect, which I think is very really cool. And um, you know, if you, if you want, you can change what it says. You can put your name in this, you can make it rainbow. Um, the opportunities are endless. Uh, the one other bit of detail you should make sure is the the left side particle emitter, we've set it as a black constant and you want to make sure it's set to... The, the left side particle emitter, we've uh, used a black constant as the particle, but you want to make sure the actual... Uh, channels it's using is RGBA rather than RGB, which is the, the default. It's because annoyingly, if you leave it as the default, it's going to give you these white squares as the first particle, but you want it to be using uh, RGBA, so that's how it will, it'll kind of deal with it. It's an annoying little detail, but it's just necessary to make the effect work. And yeah, so that's how you create the uh, cool matrix effect. Um, if you want to go ahead and try this yourself, I'm very curious to know how you guys have made this and see your own rendition of the effect. So yeah, thanks.